The final goal is to eradicate humanity as we know it. Once you understand the final destination, it becomes much easier to look back and identify the psychological conditioning, the biological tampering, the cultural grooming and the educational prepping that we have been subjected to for decades in preparation to making us accept a post-human future. It takes a lot of physical and psychological abuse to get an intelligent species like ours to agree to its own extinction. Most, if not all, that has transcended in the last 60 years was designed to get us closer to accepting such a dystopian reality. Whether you care to accept it or not, we live in a hyper-controlled matrix where our perception of reality is meticulously planned, managed, and executed in order to control and steer us in whichever direction they wish. And the direction is a post-human world. For this, they first needed to destabilize, dehumanize, and demoralize humanity through every means possible. The destruction of the nuclear family, children being indoctrinated by the state, life in mega cities and away from nature, toxic food, air and water, social media, replacing real human connection and interaction, engineered financial crisis and taxation, endless wars and massive migration, stress, anxiety, depression, drugs and alcohol, constant fear-mongering, moral relativism as the new religion, and I could go on and on about how humanity has been influenced and forced to move away from all the things that give us strength, security, purpose, and meaning. A weak, immoral, disconnected, ignorant, and unhealthy population is an easy target for the next stage, the creation of an entire generation of androgynous beings. Masculinity is under attack psychologically, culturally, and biologically. Women are being replaced in sports, entertainment, and politics by men pretending to be women. And children are being indoctrinated at school to think that gender is a choice. The transgender movement is not a grassroots movement. It comes from the top. It has nothing to do with people's freedom of expression, sexuality, or civil rights. It's an evil psyop to, with a clear agenda to get us closer to transhumanism by making us question the most fundamental notion of human identity, our gender. If you don't know who you are, if you already identify as a hybrid between a man and a woman, you will be easily convinced to become a hybrid between human and machine. Gender ideology is the two plus two equals five from George Orwell's 1984 dystopian novel. It's the final test to see whether we will follow the most absurd party line towards our own extinction. But two plus two equals four. And no matter how you choose to dress, call yourself, or change your physique, will not change that. The sad reality, though, is that in the gaslighting process to get us closer to a post-human future, they have mentally and physically harmed an increasing number of children and young people. And it's only getting worse. The cybernetic evolution of mankind by redesigning and re-engineering the DNA patterns. The modern type of bioweapons are frequency controlled. Yeah. Um, so they don't even start doing any harm before they're not activated. Yeah. We saw that, for example, and this is an interesting story when uh, we look into what's happening in the US. Um, sentient world simulation run by the intelligence community that is basically picking up data from transhumanistic technologies of all the people, creating a real world simulation. You see, if you're going to defend yourself against technology that replaces people, then the next step of convergence is to create technology that behaves like people, that in a digital world you cannot tell one from the other. We're capable of creating massive networks so real that you cannot tell them apart. And um, 
then the plan is to reverse the signal from the um, um, antenna systems they run, which is also always the uh, phase array antenna technology. Um, and they want to reverse the signals and basically uh, to turn US citizens in, into bio robots. And once infected, once the person is infected with this virus, the, these uh, nanoparticulates migrate through the bloodstream to the brain and adhere to the neurotransmitters of the victim's brain and begin to speak to and decode those neurotransmitters through a process called directed energy flashing. So this is all done by, by this DNA. There's a new field of research. They realize that the base pairs can be mounted into a chain in a way that functions like a computer, like a logical element. And this is some, if you visualize this, it's like, like the old method with telephones uh, when you were dialing with sound. Um, every bass pair has, their own, has a resonance frequency. It's somewhere in the terahertz range. And if you hit the right frequency, it is opening like a conducti conducting, uh, light conducting unit. Um, and if you have a chain of these base pairs that react on different frequencies, you need a, um, a sequence of sounds to open all the fragments to make the entire thing conductive. So it goes like do 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 do, and then the next part of the genetic thing is activated to either produce light or to produce poison. And this is something beautiful uh, out of their view of the world because if you bring this RNA or DNA into the human body, you can kind of take a radio signal and activate it from outside to produce any substance you want or to produce any light you want. Light is emotion, light is thought, light is everything. Everything we sense as experience. Um, there was a community of like 200 scientists who um, didn't want to support the, this development anymore and they, they united to a group and started to speak out as a group to the public. Their families were assassinated with uh, uh, radio frequencies and the symptoms of them dying were very, very, very similar. We do have something that is related to electromagnetic warfare that shows the same uh, symptoms, Symptom. yeah. like the flu, that is easily mistaken. Um, and then we can basically look uh, to see in, in, in the United States, this is all a hidden agenda. Nobody is officially talking about the things, even if you, if you have the terms that describe the technological system. So this is an agenda that is rolled out in the hidden in the United States. In China, it is actually the opposite. Yeah. In China, this idea of having a central AI controlling everything is rolled out in public being sold as uh, uh, an AI goddess mm -hmm. that is kind of the loving mother of the state, taking care of all people, making sure that everything is prospering in harmony. This is how they sell these developments. And still, every, every this is also absolutely public, every citizen is getting a, a kind of a, a ranking system of collecting points of being uh, nice or naughty. Yeah, the social credit uh, system. Yeah. yeah, yeah, social credit system. So, and, and people support that because Chinese people are afraid of each other. So they want each other to be canceled out in case of getting naughty. Mm -hmm. This is their mentality and they fully accept that. So this is on a completely different level. And what we do know is that Wuhan area is leading in 5G rollout worldwide. So at a certain point you need, if you have this agenda that says, uh, let's turn everybody into an AI controlled uh, bio robot to make sure nobody dances out of the line. Um, at a certain point, A, this needs to be tested 
to gather data to make it function better and at a certain point it comes to, to, to the moment where all the people who do not comply who do not function as AI robots need to be removed and I, I know the data from the United States, the guys who still continued after all the families were murdered from these group that started to talk openly about what harp facilities were mm -hmm. built for. Um, he said that actually 70% of US population see the mind control as something external. Mm -hmm. So this is bio robots. But you saying 70% are already there. I mean, just 30% yes. or maybe a bit less, yes. I don't know, but okay. In, in Europe, I'm, I don't have numbers. I just have a, some experience of my environment. You know, you get these funny moments. I had them twice till now. When I was in company and suddenly there's like a wave going through the setup. Everything goes dark for a second or a nanosecond. Mm -hmm. And then I revive and I wake up in a different conversation. And what, a split of a second later? A split of a second later, something completely else is happening around me. And it's, it's like the conversation we had was cut, stopped, ended in nowhere. And the conversation that continued sounded like it has been running for half an hour already. The, the entities that do the wiping are literally akin to daemon processing systems for the computer. So like a background processing system, a program, I mean, uh, for a computer system to the point where they, as soon as a person begins to absorb information through their data processing center, their mind that is not relative to that time or the plane, basically a specific set within a rule set or a parameter for the local environment or the uh, control system, these entities come and try and pull that information out. They literally try and delete the information from the timeline. And that's co personally or collectively. And uh, that part's real weird, but that's what that is. And uh, they're, apparently their role is a good role. This is how it was explained to me. And I've seen these beings too. And I had this effect twice. And one time I was with friends on Fuerteventura. And they were in the same spirit as I was. And a day after the guy who, who, um, who I was visiting told me, actually, you know, I think without an AI controlling everything on the planet, we are lost. Humanity, humanity is not going to make it. We need an AI to control wow. us. So he basically, boop, yeah. completely was switched in his... Um, and there were actually two people on the table from six who perceived that moment of going dark and reviving ah. and having the talk shifted. Two of us could feel it. Wow. And all the other ones said, no, there was nothing. And did you speak about it at that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we communicated about that. Wow. And what was his... So, what, what, what did you think of it? I mean, what do you think of it now? What was it? For, for me, it feels like the, the uh, sentient world simulation taking over things to push it into a defined direction when what it sees, it doesn't like it. Hmm. So apparently they have like, like uh, um, monitoring things that see when developments take a direction that are not wanted and then they test different scenarios and then they decide for one scenario and they just jump in. We have every bit shadow of information for watching because we can't look into the real computers but we can look into ours and we can see what processes they use and then decide to quarantine the actual system using software and defined networking. And then they can't talk out to the real world and instead we tunnel them down to a shadow HR department that isn't real but just behaves like real. Now. I got to be honest here, we couldn't show you everything. We had to actually change a lot of names, scribble out some IP addresses, and we're not allowed to bring you as deep into the network as we want. It's a good thing, because if we showed you everything, we'd have to shoot you. So we've come to the end of our journey of convergence of man 
and machine, of confluence between two separate streams that come together to make things more powerful. We've seen technology go from completely separate from man to leveraged to replacing man to behaving like man. What comes after behaving, I wonder? Well, if history is any guide, the question shouldn't be if this technology will one day profoundly impact our lives. The question should be, will we ever even realize it? Thank you very much.